it's such an honor for me to get to minister to you on Mother's Day. And as I've been praying and studying and just interceding for you, I really felt like God wanted me to approach this message to you as a spiritual mom and to give you some wisdom nuggets from God's word to help strengthen you. And so if you're a note taker, I, I do do PowerPoints. And the very first PowerPoint that I have for you is you are loved, prayed for, and a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. That's the truth. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Any view that you have of yourself that's less than that is a lie from the pit of hell. And sometimes well-meaning people say bad things. Well, you just got to cast down those words, those thoughts, those imaginations that exalt themselves above the Word of God because the Word of God says you are loved, you are prayed for, and you are a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles, iPads, or iPhones to Romans 8, 34. And you need to know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. You got pastors, elders, intercessors here that are all praying for you. They're pulling for you. We all are. But what's really interesting and what I'm getting ready to read is Jesus himself is interceding for you. How awesome that Jesus is interceding. I don't know about you. I mean, I love different people to pray for me. But if I could pick any person, I'd pick him. Yep, Jesus, you're the one I want interceding for me. So listen to this in Romans 8, 34. It says, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. That's where Christ is. He's there interceding for us right now. And let's go on to read because this is so good. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's some good news. That's worth shouting about. That's worth praising God for. Okay, second point I want to give you. Dream big. Go for it. Enjoy the journey. This is your, you know, we've been at this 32 years of serving Jesus. We got married uh, in 1982, and we've just been running fast for God. And you want to dream big. There is a time when we were believing God for 50 people to show up. And then we were believing God for 100. Then we got to where we were believing God for thousands. Then I got, that's not enough. It's not enough. God, give us the city. Give us the city, Lord. We want the city. And then that's not even enough. The city, we want to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And right now, we're preaching it in Iran and countries that they'll kill you if you're proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. This is going all over the world right now. Dream big, go for it, enjoy the journey. You got to ask yourself did God call me to do this? That's an important question. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And you win if you don't give up. If you know that you are called, you can endure the warfare. You can withstand the pain. You can go through a thousands upon thousands of disappointments knowing that God has called you to this and you're doing it for him. I encourage you to go all in. Don't shoot low. Divine delay does not mean no. Trust God no matter what. 
He is our source. He's the one. You know, we're all here today. We've all come on a Sunday church because this is God's house because we want to hear from heaven. So where God speak to us. God, we're here seeking your face. We're the wise ones that we recognize we can't do life without him. And you were never meant to. You were never meant to be put on earth and to be beat up and, you know, chewed up and spit out. You were meant to do life connected to your creator, God. And we're here to honor him and to pull strength from him. And so just as you're sitting here, just don't, just don't sit Soak it in. Draw it in. Pull from the presence of God. Get revelation from the word of God. Keep your mind and your attention on him. Don't let it wander off to what you're going to do two hours from now, three hours from now, four hours from now. What this person thinks, what that person thinks. This is your time with God. This is your moment to hear from heaven. This is your moment to receive your healing. His presence is here. You can get it. Pull, draw. This atmosphere is prayed over. This is holy ground. This is sacred ground. Now, as you're going through this, life can get intense. You know, I'm a very goal-driven person. But you got to enjoy the journey. You got God created the world, and He rested one day. So you got to learn to rest. You got to learn to. Just kind of laugh through life. I, I, I love to laugh. I, I love to pull pranks. Some of them work, some don't. <laughs> I might do a sermon one day called Prank Goes, Pranks That Won't Go Bad. But uh, I, I love this in Proverbs 31, 25. And the new living, those are the funny ones though, aren't they? The ones that go bad, you try to prank and they backfire. Okay. Stay focused. Proverbs 31, 25, and the New Living Translation. It says, she laughs without fear of the future. Let's laugh without fear of the future. God's not given you and me a spirit of fear, but he's given us one of power, love, and a sound mind. So let's laugh. And so I have a video for you, another Mother's Day video to make you laugh. Let's go ahead and show that. Keep you laughing through the journey. Hold 
up. Are you seriously gonna just sit there and watch Duck Dynasty while I do all the dishes and get the kids ready for bed? Psh. Dinner's done. All done, and the house is a wreck. My baby daddy sitting down with his chair way back. Here we go. Time to get him to sleep. Do it all again tomorrow with my favorite piece. I'm a mom. Anybody relate to that one, huh? You can thank Pastor Mel. He picked that one out while we're on vacations looking for videos to play. Um, but sometimes, you, you know, you do. You just got to laugh your way through. And sometimes you just got to have a praise storm. You know, you just got to praise God through it all and just, 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 just laugh and pray and praise and trust God. You're going to make it through to the other side. Okay, number three. Are you ready for this? Pray and seek God daily first thing. Again, I'm coming to you as your spiritual mom to give you some guidance, some wisdom in life from the Word of God. So this is from the heart of the Father for you. Pray outrageous prayers. Not small prayers, outrageous prayers. And keep praying and praying and praying and praying until you see it manifest. I have different things. It's been, eight, I can remember one was eight years. And I remember people thought I was crazy after the third and fourth year. But I kept praying and praying and bam, one day it happened. So I believe your bam moment is just getting ready to happen. Just keep pray it through, pray it through. I, I love this story about Evie Ed Hill who pastored Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles. He's in heaven now. But he had a magnificent church, and he tells the story of how mama's love and prayers changed his life. And during the height of the Depression, his birth mom had five children and could not afford to feed them all. So she went ahead and gave young Ed at age four to a friend of hers. And Ed ended up calling this friend, it was a small county called Sweet Home, and Ed called her Mama. And as he was growing up in Sweet Home, Mama displayed remarkable faith, which led her to have big plans for young Ed. Against nearly insurmountable obstacles, Mama helped Ed graduate from high school, the only student to graduate that year from the county school and even insisted that he goes on to college. She took Ed to the bus station, handed him the ticket and five dollars, and said, go off to Prairie View College, and Mama is going to be praying for you. Hill claims that he didn't know much about prayer, but he knew Mama did. When he arrived at the college with a dollar and 90 cents in his pocket, they told him he needed $80 in cash in order to register. So here is how Hills describe what happens next. I got in line, and the devil said to me, get out of the line. But I heard my mama saying in my ear, I'll be praying for you. So I stood in line on mama's prayer. Soon there was another student ahead of me, and I began to get nervous, but I stayed in line just about the time when the other student got all of her stuff and turned away. A man, Dr. Drew, touched my shoulder and he said, are you Ed Hill? I said, yes. He said, are you Ed Hill from Sweet Home? Yes. Have you paid yet? Well, not quite. Well, we've been looking for you all morning. I said, well, what do you want with me? 
We have, he said, we have a four-year scholarship that will pay your room and board, your tuition, and give you $30 a month to spend. And he said he heard, Mama, I'll be praying for you. And so as your spiritual mama right now, I just want to pray for you. I just pray every dream that's in your heart would come to pass. Everything that you petition God for, don't give up. Don't quit. I'm praying for you. I'm not the only one. You got Jesus on your side. You got pastors and elders that love you. We love you. We love you. We're praying for you. Take a step out in faith. No, you're not alone. God's never, never, never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Don't quit. Don't give up. I'm telling you, he's going to accomplish one prayer request and the next and the next and the next. And year after year, if you keep circling and keep circling and keep circling and keep circling it until it manifests. Until it manifests. Too many people, they give up right before the manifestation. Don't quit. God's not quitting on you. Who are you to quit on yourself? Now, this scripture is a scripture I live on every day. It's Matthew 6, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What things? He was talking about the birds of the air, any food, anything in the natural that you need, God says is going to be added unto you. I cannot tell you how many times I just can't figure out stuff. You know, I, I can't figure it out, and I can't put the pieces together to make it work. And I know in life you got some situations that you can't make it work. But there is one thing you can do, and I love that God makes it this easy. Because when I look at some stuff, I just, wow, that's, I can't figure that out. I don't know what to do. But I can do what God says. Put me first. Every morning I can get up and I can read the word and I can pray and I can put them first. And you can do that too. Even this morning, I don't get up and just get dressed and come here. I mean, I've studied. My message is prepared. But I am still get up early to go, God, please, please give me your anointing for the people Please use me to speak to your people. I know I cannot do this without him. I'm very aware I can't do life without him. I wouldn't want to do life without him. But we don't have to. Our God who's massive, who created heavens and earth, who created you, is waiting for you to ask him, waiting for you to seek his face, waiting for you to figure out you can't do it without him. But you can put them first. And if that's all you do, God, here I am, Lord. I'm seeking your face. I, you know, I don't get all this. I don't get this. I don't, but God, I'm here, and I'm seeking your face. Well, all of a sudden, he just straightens it out. All of a sudden, that thing that was so huge has just gone away. All of a sudden, while you're in prayer, he shows you how to fix it. He shows you who to call. He shows you who to put in your life and who to get out of your life. Which brings me to point four. <laughs> Choose friends that bring out the God best in you. You pick your friends. You choose. And you only get a few God-loyal friends in your life trite time. Treat them well. Celebrate them. Serve them. You know, I am so blessed to be married to my best friend. For 32 years, we've been loyal to one another. We've been God loyal to God and each other and have served them. What a blessing. What a blessing to be able to say that. But I believe it's because we put God first. You know, and sure, we have squabbles like everybody else, but that's all it is, is a squabble. And I give him something to eat, and then he stops. No, I'm just kidding. He's not even, I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's not here. Praise God. He's meeting with someone. I'm safe, safe, safe. Okay. <laughs> I might as well wrap. Okay, so here's the deal. You, you don't go through life 
without, <laughs> you know, Paul, you take him to your restaurant, wherever you're at. He's happy. No, so you don't get to go through life without having somebody you thought was a friend who's not a friend. You find out they're not a friend. If they betray you or they're not your friend. So you have to be willing to let go of people. And you got to recognize you're going A to Z. Sometimes people only go with you A to B or A to D. They don't go with you the whole journey. And that's got to be okay. Because sometimes people want everything the same. They want to work it out with somebody that doesn't want to work something out with you. Well, when we got saved, we didn't have to cut off our relationships. They cut us off. <laughs> They didn't want to hear about Jesus. And every time we'd call, hey, you know, no return phone call. Because we were so excited about Jesus and the things of God. And, you know, we lost all of our friends except for we ended up having one. So it was the three of us hanging out all the time, going to church, doing our little Bible studies. And, you know, and then more people got out of it. Sometimes you got to get rid of certain people to, you know, get on with the new. And if you're not being celebrated and you're just tolerated, that's the wrong group of friends for you. You need to get people that, that are not discouraging your God dreams, but are encouraging you and pushing you forward and telling you to pray and go for it. And I'll pray with you and I'll stand with you for that. You know, it, and it hurts. You know, it, it does hurt when people you thought were your friends, you find out they're not. But you know what? When that happens, believe God for better friends. Just believe Him for better ones. And grow. Learn through the process. You know, there are certain things that I look for that I see, you know, like if someone's, if someone's always talking about themselves, praising themselves, how great I am, they don't make good friends. <laughs> you, know, so you can't be so needy to have a friend and just listen to them all the time. It's got to be a two-way give back and forth. You know, I, 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 praise the Lord. I'll move on. <laughs> Number five, live a life of honor. Honor God. Honor those in authority. Honor your father and mother. You know, I, 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 you know, as far as back to the friendship, it looks like I'm going back there. But there's something about people that feel like they're entitled. You're entitled to nothing. But with God, you're entitled to everything. But there is, there's still that you're not better. You, even as I get into this honoring, you honor everybody. Everybody is a person. Everybody is somebody's baby. So, you know, it's living a life of honor. You know, I honor my husband. I respect him. I, I hold him in great honor. I've honored, it says here, Exodus 20, 12, honor your father and your mother. Then you will live a long life, full of life, in the land the Lord will give you. Now, some of you, you can't honor what your parent did, the action, if there was, you know, violence and, and tragedy and, and things that shouldn't have taken place. But you can still honor their headship and position and pray for them and love them and not get bitter or, over some misuse that people did of authority. Keep your heart right. Keep it soft. Keep it pure. Keep it holy. Keep it forgiving. You know, I, I, Hebrews <coughs> 13, 7. I like this. It says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you, for they're constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men and women who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. And so, you know, in this honor and honoring spiritual leaders, it doesn't mean that if a spiritual leader tells you to drink Kool-Aid, you don't follow that. You imitate us as we imitate Christ. But as your spiritual leaders, when we're telling you, when we have a love for you, well, we're not trying to get you to follow our agenda and kill yourself. That would be ridiculous. That's not in the Word. But this is why we point you to reading the Word 
you know, here you get a nice meal. You're going to feel fed. You're going to feel imparted to. But you can have this every day on your own. You can have your own experience with God. You can have your own glory encounters. But that's going to take you setting that time aside every day. Read your word. Pray. Learn to develop that relationship because he's the one walking with you. Say, ah, don't call that person. Ah, stay away here. Ah, this is your destiny right here. He'll just show you. But you'll have this relationship and it'll be awesome. So as I'm telling you to do this, you should obey me. If you don't, it's not going to be profitable for you because what I'm giving you is the word of God. And when I give you the word of God, it's going to profit you. Does that make sense? Want to break it down, make it easy for you. Honor God's house. We're so blessed to have a house called in his presence. You know, I, I, I know it hurts our heart to see anyone trash God's house, but honor the house of God. You know, when people do that, don't get into it. Turn away from evil and do good and say something wonderful because God's house is glorious. His presence is here. We love God's house. But you know, sometimes spiritual mamas got to tell their kids that. No, that's not right. That's gossip. That's slander. Don't do it. Don't have anything to do with it. Okay, last point. Shine, baby, shine. Shine, baby, shine. <laughs> shine for his glory. You're called to be a bright light in a dark place. That's who you are. That's what you're meant to do. This is why I don't want you getting into the gossip, the slander. The, the, that's dark. That's ugly. There's nothing pretty about that. And, and when you put your mind and attention there, it's ugly. That's why you've got to get out from among it and get in the presence of God and worship him and stay pure and stay holy and let him, let him make you that bright light. That's who you are. You're a love vessel. So when you get hurt, and you will, don't spend too much time being bitter. Pray for them, forgive them, and then shine, baby, shine. Let it go. Don't take it to bed with you that night. Leave it. Deal with it with God. Here it is. And then get out there and do your God call. Because sometimes when a hit comes your way, it's to distract you so that you don't shine, baby, shine. And you just need to recognize that. Oh, that's trying to get me to go in a direction I'm not called to go in. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to shine, baby, shine for his glory. I'm going to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm going to tell people about Jesus Christ, my Savior, my healer, the one that delivered me from anorexia and bulimia, the one that healed me of second and third degree burns, the one that... Took me from being a compulsive liar to be a speaker of truth. I mean, he is awesome. He is worthy to be praised. And, you know, Pastor and I, every year, we do a once-a-year vacation in Hawaii. Now, I go more often because I get invitations to speak well, so does my husband now, too, at churches in Hawaii. And God says, yes, every time I get an invite from a Hawaii church, he says, yes, that's me, go. So, you know, how do I know I got the joy of the Lord over it? So, uh, but while we're on vacation, we always lead people to the Lord. I mean, that's who we are. We're not asking you to do anything that we don't do. We want you to share your faith, tell people your testimonies, invite them to church, lead them to the Lord. We do the same thing. We're giving out our cards all the time, inviting people. And I'm telling you, this trip, everybody said no. <laughs> I mean, not only did they say no, they got mad about it. I mean, our very last drive back to the Maui airport, the cab driver, you know, my husband's witnessing to him, and I came in for the, you know, do you know where you're going to go when you take your last breath here on earth? And he, you know, he was mad at both of us. And we got so many people mad at us. And I ended up sharing this with my women's team. One of the gals was, said, I'm so glad that you shared that because sometimes, you know, we only hear that you led someone to the Lord, but it's good to know that, you know, people say no to you too. Well, people say no to us all the time. 
you know, but we just don't care. I don't tend to focus on that because I get too excited about the one that says yes. Just that one person that says yes. It's so exciting. So I really don't care if 99 have said no. I talk about the one that said yes. And so we have to be willing to hear a lot of no's sometimes before we hear yeses. But one of the things, as my husband and I were sharing, is we were planting seed. Even though the people said no, we still got the word in there. We still said something, you know, enough to tick them off. <laughs> and, you know, as we plant the seed, it, it, it's... it's a seed planted. So don't ever think because they said no or because they got mad that God didn't use you because they'll remember that. They'll remember that thing that, you know, why would they get so irritated at somebody so nice that cared about them? You know, that's going to bug them. That's going to, you know, they're going to have some dreams about that. So you just keep praying for them and it could be that next person. But Matthew 5 verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So as people see us shining, walking in the love of Christ, they're going to glorify our God in heaven. And this is why you got to remember, Jesus came that you could have life and that you could have it more abundantly. The devil wants to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. So the devil wants to take, God wants to give. And, and you should believe him for the big stuff. Yes, he wants you blessed. Yes, he, he wants to raise up millionaires and billionaires. Of course, he'd rather you have the money that are going to fund the gospel and preach the gospel all over the world than somebody, you know, making ugly porn sites that have billions and billions of dollars. I mean, let's not, you know, there's a nasty religious spirit that likes to tell people they have to be poor. Oh, you have that, you shouldn't have that, you should give it to the poor. Well, of course we should give to the poor. But it doesn't mean that you can't be blessed. Yes, yes, we give to the poor, but you know, it's almost like if you're not poor, there's something the matter with you. Well, no, if you're poor and broke, who in the world's gonna wanna follow you? They're gonna wanna be able to pay uh, for their kids' college tuition. They're gonna wanna get them braces. They're gonna want them to have food on the table. So let's not get, you know, just you know, when we get Christians, sometimes people get into these doctrines that there's nowhere in the Bible that says that. He says he wishes above all things that you prosper and that you're in good health. Praise God for our good health man out of the hospital here today. Praise God. We've been praying for you. <laughs> if you need healing, just raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you. Father, you see the hands up all over the place. You're a good God and you're a healing God. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you as we enter into your presence. We know there's fullness of joy. There's fullness of joy here. And I thank you for touching and healing your people right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I thank you for healing right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the same Holy Spirit, the one that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he's alive inside of you, and he's quickening and healing your body. You receive this online too. God's healing you right now. I thank you, Father, for blessing your people with divine health and healing. I thank you for hearts that beat perfectly. I thank you that every bone and vertebrae is lined up perfectly in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus over each and every person that by your stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name, if you agree, you can say amen and just receive that. Sometimes the world's need is so great we feel overwhelmed. What can we do that will impact the world for the cause of Christ? Pastors Mel and Desiree Ayers and the team at In His Presence have created a global ministry outreach. Through accountability and tracking real-time ministry results, we've developed opportunities that will allow your giving to make a real difference. From planting new churches and supporting ministry leaders to preaching the gospel to the Muslim world and fighting sex trafficking, you'll know that every dollar you give to this program is changing lives for the better. Pick up the phone right now or visit us on the web and send a gift of any size today. That simple action will begin a process that will reach around the globe.
In today's world of competing voices, this is a place where your financial giving is reaping an incredible harvest. The clock is ticking, so call, write, or go online today. It was just another day for an experienced Hollywood stunt woman. But during a dangerous car stunt, something went horribly wrong. That's all Desiree remembers about that day, when an incredible onset explosion left her fighting for her life. But after only 10 days, she walked out of a Los Angeles burn unit completely healed. And that remarkable miracle has now been captured in her new book, Beyond the Flame, a journey from burning devastation to healing restoration. Today, Desiree, along with her husband, Mel, pastor the growing In His Presence Church in the heart of Hollywood's entertainment industry. And this highly acclaimed book tells the story of that amazing journey. Order your copy of Beyond the Flame today and begin your own journey out of the challenges you face. What are you trusting God for? Physical healing? A financial miracle? Purpose for living? Nothing's too big for God. What He did for Desiree, He'll do for you. Beyond the Flame will encourage you to stand on the promises of God's Word, speak life into your situation, and reach for your miracle. You too can live beyond the flames in your life, and you can start today. If you've ever experienced an eating disorder, or know someone who has, then you understand the shame, the humiliation, and the fear. Millions of men and women today are literally held in bondage to this crippling problem with no answer in sight. But now, one woman has broken through the lies of the diet industry and dared to tell the truth. Desiree Ayers was a successful Hollywood actress and professional stunt woman. She was at the top of her field and yet hid the secret of anorexia and bulimia for years. In her remarkable book, God Hunger, Desiree Ayers exposes the lies and dares to speak the truth. Order online at GodHunger.com. If you or a loved one suffers from an eating disorder, then don't wait. God Hunger. Finally, hope is here.